Hello, my name is Mr. Jensen. I'm the health and PE teacher at Three Oaks Elementary. I'm here to guide you through day one of a virtual or face-to-face -face soccer dribbling lesson. Now, please keep in mind, if you're at home, you can always use balled up socks, balled up paper, any other type of ball uh, that you have at your disposal. If you're at a school that doesn't have enough soccer balls for all players, they can either share one or again, you can use other types of equipment like playground balls and so on to simulate the soccer ball. Our I can statement for this lesson is I can dribble the ball while moving with both my feet following all the cues. Right behind me is gonna be my video prompter and I will include that Google slide uh, with this video so that you can always use it for reference. So again, once again, the equipment needs is each person should have their own ball or something they can dribble. They need space, safe space to dribble around and uh, later on in the unit, you're gonna want uh, some kind of goal. Now you can use two shoes, cones, um, you can even tape on the gym wall or anything else like that to simulate those uh, small goals. Typically in a normal lesson, we would go through a warm up first. Uh, on the screen right here, we have a soccer style warm up that uh, I'm going to skip for purposes of this video, but uh, when you're implementing this unit, just pause right here, play the video, and then resume. All right, a couple fun soccer facts before we get started, because soccer is a global uh, sport. It is actually the most popular sport in most countries around the world. It's called football in other countries. Obviously here, we call it soccer. And it's primarily just uses our feet. So it's one of the few sports that just uses our feet. Um, there are hands involved when we do throw-ins or uh, keepers at a higher level, but generally speaking, the bulk of the game is played with your foot. Uh, a couple of popular soccer players, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo, excuse me, uh, Lionel Messi, Pele, um, Abby Wambach, Carly Lloyd, and that's just naming a few popular ones that you may have heard of. Uh, roots of soccer are actually thousands of years old, but the modern game has originated from uh, England or Great Britain, really. Okay, so now for the meat and potatoes of this. So I'm going to stand a little bit to the side so that you can hopefully see the screen also in the camera. And when we dribble, there's four parts of our foot that we primarily want to use. The primary one is the inside of our foot. That's where our big toe meets our foot. Um, the other parts of our foot that we want to use is the outside of our foot, where the pinky toe meets our foot, the sole of our foot, and of course the laces of our foot. I find that when I dribble, and this is probably common for most players, when I'm dribbling quickly, I'm using the laces or the outside of my foot. When I'm dribbling slowly and trying to do some kind of trick or maneuver, I'm using basically all parts of my foot, including the sole, the inside, and the outside. So our cues for soccer dribbling are going to be, first one is use the inside, outside, laces or sole of our foot. The second one is going to be light touches. That means we want to keep the soccer ball close to us. We don't want to let it roll too far away, otherwise another player will steal it. The third one is we want to try to keep our head up. So that way we can see what's coming up. We can see where our, our teammates are, where our opponents are, where the goal is, the boundary line, and so on. And finally, we want to keep control of the ball meaning that we control where it goes, not the ball, okay? So, again, that is use the inside, outside, sole and laces of the foot. You wanna keep the ball close, keep your head up, and keep control. Now, this is our opportunity to practice our dribbling for a few minutes. Now, ordinarily, go ahead and pause right here, and you can practice dribbling for up to five minutes. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna practice for about 30 seconds. So again, I got my head up. Oops, not control it now. I'm using the inside of my foot for this part because I'm trying to keep it close. My head is up and I'm light touches. Now I'm using my sole as I go back. Inside of my foot and my sole. All right, so again, you can pause it here, practice that a little bit longer. All right, so now we're gonna play a little bit of a game. We're gonna play red light, green light with the soccer ball. So how that's gonna work is when the music is playing, there's gonna be a video of Cristiano Ronaldo uh, doing a lot of really cool dribbling stuff so you can kind of see what a professional looks like. But while you're doing that, 
you're also dribbling it around in self space, following our cues of using the inside outside, laces and sole of our foot, keeping it close, excuse me, and head up, light touches, okay? And we will pause it periodically for our red light. Now, if you wanna do this on your own, again, it's right there. I'm only gonna do this for about a minute to simulate what it will look like. And now, when I hear the music stop, that means red light, I either wanna put my foot on top, try not to put your weight on it where you'll fall down, and I'm just gonna keep the ball in place. I wait for the music to start again. And then I start dribbling again. When the music stops, again, I keep control of it. It's very quickly and very easy to know who has control and who doesn't based on how far the ball rolls away during the stop portions of the game. Moving along. There are some different tricks we can try with a soccer ball to help increase not only our proficiency on the soccer field, but also just make us more comfortable when we're dribbling. Uh, just a couple quick ones are our toe taps on the top, excuse me, that's where we're going to tap on the top of the ball, so slow, and then once you get more proficient, you try to go as fast as you can, okay? Again, never put your weight on a soccer ball because, again, it can roll on you, you'll fall down, and we don't want you to get hurt, okay? So let's go ahead and do the toe taps for 30 seconds. Try to get your head up when you feel comfortable with it. All right, and that is time. The next one we can do is a ball control one where you're gonna try to do it with both feet and you take your ball in and out, just like this. And of course you can do the other foot, or should do the other foot. I'm better with my right than my left on this. And we would do each side for 30 seconds. Moving on, if you have a more advanced group, then you can do a cutback, and that's where you step next to the ball, you tap it behind you, you turn around, and you're changing direction now. So if I'm here, I tap it, I turn, and I dribble. So I'm coming down, I turn it, and now I've changed directions. Obviously that would be a good play if somebody was chasing me and I was trying to juke them or if I was coming up on an opponent and I wanted to make a quick turn so they couldn't stop. And finally there's one called the figure eight, also called scissors. And that is one where you're gonna bring your foot on the inside, then you bring it around, and then you come in with the other leg in and out. So slowly it looks like this. And quickly, again, trying to keep that head up, it looks like this. We would do each of those skills for 30 seconds depending on the ability level of our class. Then we have another red light, green light game. This time incorporating those skills. You can play it up two ways. One is you can call out, all right, do your figure eight. Okay, do your cutbacks. Or your more beginner soccer players can just dribble and just say, okay, keep practicing your dribbling. And when the music stops, of course they stop. When it goes, they go. And that completes our day one lesson of soccer dribbling. Just a quick reminder. Our cues are the inside, outside, laces, and sole. Light touches, head up, and keep the ball close. Those are our four cues. On day two, we would continue dribbling. We would add more to it, more dynamic moving, more, uh, not necessarily tricks, but more stunts that you can do with the soccer ball. One, to beat a defender, but two, that just improves your awareness of where the ball is 
and how to dribble. And day three, we would add in more dribbling and then actually striking the ball towards a target, okay? So that concludes our day one soccer dribbling for virtual or face-to-face. -face. And our I can statement was I can dribble a soccer ball following all the cues with my feet. Thank you.